I don't know what's most impressive about my Gen 3 Ura ring. The fact that it has been by far seemingly the most indicative of my actual rest levels and activity levels, or the fact that it's managed to do so while well, I've apparently been wearing it on completely the wrong finger all this time. This video is sponsored by Ura, but I've actually been a paying user of theirs for over a year now. I've been using a Gen 3 ring, but we're gonna put that aside for now and talk about Ura's Gen 3 Horizon ring which I also um, ordered in the wrong size because I didn't realize you're supposed to wear it on your index finger. For the uninitiated, Ura makes sleep and activity tracker devices that from my experience are among the most seamless to use on the market because my problem with a lot of wearable devices is that they need to be charged every day. And how can you possibly sell something as a sleep tracker if you have to charge it every night while you're, see, you guessed it, sleeping. So by contrast, even though these are so small that they fit on your finger, the battery actually lasts for about a week. Then basically you wake up in the morning, it syncs to your app and gives you a whole bunch of interesting insights about how you've been doing. So these are, these are my actual, um, these are my actual stats. I usually go to bed. I'm <clears throat> a bit of a night owl. I don't get up super early. And the funny thing about this 8.30 average wake up time is that I get up every day to take the kids to school at 7.30, which should give you some idea of what I'm looking at on weekends. I do a fair bit, of, look at that. Does it even know that my primary source of exercise is racket sports or is that just a stock image? I actually don't know. While we wait for that to update, let's jump back to the Gen 3 Horizon ring. This is my regular Gen 3 ring that I bought a while back. It's got, it's got some schmoo on it. <laughs> Sorry, don't, don't mind that. And here's the Horizon. So one of the biggest contrasts is that the original Gen 3 has this kind of flat part at the top. You actually use that to orient it correctly on your finger so that it can get the best, po sorry, I pointed at my ring finger, so that you can get the best possible tracker readings. Because all the sensors, as you can see, are kind of distributed, there you go, throughout the inside of the ring. It's actually a, a marvelously dense device. Super cool. The Gen 3, by contrast, does not have that ridge. So in order to make sure that you've got it oriented correctly, they've got a little dimple here that'll help you line it up. It's also available in a new rose gold color, jumping on the hottest trends there. And regardless of which color or which style you choose, they've got a lot in common. They're basically designed to be worn all the time. I've done everything from washing the dishes to swimming in my Gen 3 ring, and I've never had any issues with water resistance. It's actually rated to 100 meters, which means you could basically dive with the bloody thing. It's rated to operate at temperatures between minus 10 and 52 degrees Celsius. And one of the coolest features they've added recently is the ability to measure blood oxygen levels. So they basically shine red and infrared light into your skin, uh, right next to your arteries, where it can get the most accurate read. That's actually one of the things that really sets the Ura ring apart in general, is that because it's on your finger, it has really easy close to the surface access to all the biometric data that it needs. And it uses this to provide all kinds of cool insights. Let's actually go back to the app for a second here. Uh, one of the coolest things is, in my opinion, the readiness tab. One of the coolest things it tells you is, hey, in combination with the activity tab, hey, you went really hard this day, so your readiness the next day, probably not so good. Here's how your resting heart rate's doing. It'll also encourage you. It'll say like, hey, you haven't done anything in a couple of days. Your body's ready. Go out for a run. And I just found it so much more insightful and so much more useful than other supposed health trackers that just have like a, a static calorie goal on a given day, for example. It's like, no, I'm tired and I feel like shit. And the Ura ring will be like, hey, you're tired and you feel like shit. you need to rest. That's pretty cool. The other thing that I found maybe not useful, but certainly more insightful is the sleep tracking because it's something that you can actually wear at night, except when you take breaks to charge it. Um, even though it might not change your ability to fall asleep right away, or it might not affect how, how much time you spend in deep sleep or REM sleep, 
it at least gives me some idea of why I'm feeling so tired or why my body hasn't fully recovered after an exercise session because it'll also tell you like, hey, uh, you know, tell me about deep sleep. What does, this, what does this do? There's a lot that you can actually learn in the app, which is pretty neat, and they've continued to add more features over time. I've actually been using it since they provided a Gen 2 for what was supposed to be a sponsored video way back then, even though that didn't ultimately happen. The charger is super convenient. You just plug a Type-C cable into the back here, plug it into any Type-A power source, and then it helps you orient it with the three little bumps. So what I suspect is that my regular Gen 3 ring will actually fit on, no, really? Oh, that's a shame. Oh, oh, that's probably just the size. Uh, these are, whoop, whoop. Uh, these are size nine and mine is size eight. Remember I said that I've had some issues getting it to fit lately. I think my fingers have actually gotten fatter. The ideal size for me is eight and a half. Uh, but unfortunately, Ura has not done half sizes since Gen 2. Though, now that I know you're supposed to wear it on the index finger, I might have to, uh, I might have to get maybe even like a size 10 and wear it on my index finger and maybe I don't have to worry about that half size issue anymore. So that's actually really good, really good news for me. I guess we should talk about the tech specs a little bit more. I already talked about that red and infrared light, but it actually has green, red, and infrared lights, a total of seven temperature sensors and 3D accelerometers. Um, it's the same product as the regular Gen 3. This is just like the sleek horizon design. And what that does is, again, in my experience, provide way, way, way better automatic detection of workouts. Like I would be driving home, right? I've got a, you know, unnamed competing all-in-one watch on my wrist, okay? And I've got my Ura ring on my finger and my Ura ring's like, wow, you just had like a pretty intense workout and now you're doing nothing, you're driving. And then the one on my wrist would be telling me during my workout, hey, you need to stand up and move around for a bit. And then I'm like driving, it's like, wow, keep it up. I'm sitting here going, you have, you have no idea what's going on at all, do you? So you can see here's a Thursday. I have badminton training on Thursday nights, right there. Very, very clearly. You can see the next day, low readiness. You went pretty hard, dude, right? Apparently with the temperature sensors, they can now provide a period prediction. Not that applicable to me, but um, you know, but I'm sure it's useful to someone. <laughs> oh, this is new actually. Apparently it can help detect if you're getting sick. Uh, so it'll learn your normal body temperature and then let you know if things are feeling not too normal. That's a, that's a big thing is it actually takes, I'd say probably, a, they, I think they say a week, but I'd say more like a couple weeks before it really starts to provide you good insights because everyone has a different circadian rhythm. Everybody has like a different normal body temperature, normal heart rate. Uh, but once it does learn you, once you are wearing it consistently, it's the best health tracker that I have used. Yeah, I gotta get an index finger sized one. That's the only reason that I haven't been uh, using it is here, I'll show you guys. I think my fingers have just swollen up or something because this is getting it on. I did not have nearly as much trouble getting it on and off before. And now that it's on, you can see, like I need soap, water, and a significant amount of force to get that off. So it has just become like, unbearable to charge my ring. <laughs> Make sure you get the right size. Oh, that's not in the talking points, but I should talk about how that process works. So I went through this twice already with my Gen 2 and with my Gen 3. Basically they ship you uh, like plastic dummy rings and you can try them on on all your different fingers, figure out what works best for you. I believe that's at no charge. I don't even think you need to send them back. And then that allows you to ensure that you order exactly the right size for you. So if I have anyone to blame for my sizing issues, it's myself. I guess I just got too swole. There's something in here about talking about a feature where they have like restorative time, tracking your, your how much time you spend in a relaxed state. I can't speak to that. I don't think I spend any time in a relaxed state, so maybe it'll be good for you. Uh, they're made of titanium with a PVD coating. Um, I've never had any durability issues, so can't complain there. Oh, and Ura now collects to Strava, which allows members to easily import their Strava activities into Ura. 
It's worth mentioning on the subject of memberships that Oura does now have a monthly charge. So it's about $6 a month after the first six months, which is included with your ring. Um, jokes on you suckers. I bought the Gen 3 as an upgrade to my Gen 2, so I get grandfathered in to the lifetime membership. Haha. <laughs> but um, for you guys, yes, there is a monthly charge. But based on the ongoing development of the app, I'd say that's not entirely unreasonable in this case. Of course, the video is sponsored by Oura, but I would never say anything that I didn't already think. And I've talked a fair bit about my experience with the Oura Ring on the WAN show. Uh, so um, none of this is gonna be a surprise for those of you who follow closely. What might be a surprise is you can purchase the Oura Gen 3 Horizon today using the link in the video description. Four fun colors, including matte black, rose gold, uh, silver, like my original Gen 3, and then there's one more. What's the last one? There's five colors. There's five, colors. five colors, you say? Well, what are the last two? So silver, black, stealth, gold, and rose gold. They're definitely a little bulkier than a regular ring and it does take you a while to get used to them. Like you can actually see here, like my pinky doesn't quite get all the way close to my ring finger. But now that I'm used to it, it kind of I kind of feel naked without it. And one of the surprising things is that it's actually really light. If you had an all metal ring this size, I suspect it would be a lot more noticeable on the finger than the like metal plastic electronics combo they've got going on here. Pricing starts at $2.99 and goes up to $3.99, depending on the variant that you ultimately choose. Here's a pro tip, guys. If you're gonna do your sizing, make sure you account for the season. I think that's part of my problem as well, is when I got this, it was um, in the cold season. And so I had an eight and a half, and I was like, oh yeah, I could do a half size smaller. And I tried the eight and it was fine to get on and off. And now we're still in the warmer part of the season. And this, yeah, this is not coming off. Subscribe to Short Circuit. I'm not gonna be able to get this off now.